Chair of the Committee of uh, Stand Committee of Human Resources. Today we will consider appointments for ABCs, agency boards, and commissions. Just asking that everybody keep their phone on mute unless you're called upon by the, myself or one of the uh, staff here. And I'm uh, just going to take a quick roll call. So we'll start with the NDP. Claudia Chender here, MLA for Dartmouth South. Good morning. Kendra Coombs, MLA for Cape Breton Center. Larry Harrison, Colchester, Muscadabin Valley. Brad Johns, MLA for Sackville Beaver Bank, member of the official opposition. Suzanne Lonis Croft, MLA Lunenburg, and Vice Chair. Bill Horn, MLA for Waverly Followers of Beaver Bank. Rafa Di Costanzo, MLA for Clayton Park West. And uh, any um, staff or um, any of the, uh, we'll get the clerk uh, to introduce themselves also. All right. Well, I'll start. I'm Judy Cavanaugh, the committee clerk. Gordon Hepp, committee counsel. Peter Harrison, PC caucus. Francis Tufford, NDP Caucus Office. Ray Jewell, Nova Scotia Liberal Caucus Office. Okay, we'll jump right into committee business and we'll start with the ABC uh, appointment. Is there anyone that uh, wants to speak up? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I would like to make a, mo a motion. Okay. Um, it's Suzanne Lonis Cross. Um, the Department of Business, Peggy's Cove Commission, Janice Steele as member. Nicole Campbell as Vice Chair and Member, Peter Richardson, Chair and Member, Karen Fader, Member. Uh, any questions? All those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Anyone else? Suzanne Lonis Croft again uh, for the Department of Environment. Round table on the Environment and Sustainable Prosperity. Scott Skinner, member and chair. John Crace, member. Angela M. B. Gillis, member. Uh, any questions? Mr. Chair. Mr. Johns. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just, as the, uh, as the critic for Department of Environment, I just uh, want the record to reflect I know that there are currently 15 vacancies uh, on the Environment and Sustainable Prosperity Committee. Um, this will fill three of those, and two of those being a reappointment, so there's only really one new appointment. It still leaves 12 vacant seats on that committee, and I just want the record to reflect that. Uh, I'm really very, very disappointed 
Last year, the government called a uh, emergency meeting on on climate change and talked about how uh, important it was to address the issues around climate. Here we are today making appointments to that committee, and uh, we're only making three appointments. Two of them are reappointments, and still 12 outstanding vacancies on that committee. So I just want the record to show that the PC caucus and and myself as the environment critic are very disappointed that we didn't have more applicants come forward and appointments today. Thank you. Duly noted. Any, anyone else? Claudia Chender. Uh, yep, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I just, um, I would, I guess, echo the concern of my colleague around the remaining vacancies. I do want to say that um, I think we're pleased to see the reappointment of Mr. Skinner and Mr. Crace. Uh, they've been longstanding members of that uh, board and, and have done a good job in that capacity, but it's true that this roundtable is a very important one. Um, in the past, it's been one that represents all sectors of um, the environment and the environment impacting industries, uh, so it's been unusual in that way and that we have a lot of players at the table and the ability to really have conversations um, that, uh, that have far-reaching consequences, and um, I agree that with 12 vacancies, that's not going to get up and running, uh, not to mention the fact that there has been continual delay in the appointment process for this particular board, so in times we've waited a year or two past expiration to reappoint members. So I think it's important that the record shows that um, we're eager to see this roundtable up and running um, at full capacity as soon as possible. Duly noted, and I would add that um, uh, it, it, you, you're both right, it, it is an extremely important committee. Uh, I think we all have very extensive um, connections within the community, and maybe what we could do as committee members and individual MLAs is uh, reach out to our um, connections. And uh, I, I, I personally don't know um, uh, why, uh, but we could encourage some of those individuals that we know that we think would fit well on this board to apply. What's everyone? Uh, Go ahead, John. Mr. Brad. Chair, uh, Brad, John, thank you for your comments. I would, I would suggest that uh, two things. First of all, I don't think it's. Uh, although, I personally, and I'm sure uh, other MLAs have no problem uh, making uh, references. There were 34 applicants that came forward to this. Um, you know, when when we have brought up issues on the floor or uh, in different committees, uh, basically we're told that it's a responsibility of the government to do that. And the minister did commit uh, during the sitting of the House when the Environment and Sustainability uh, Prosperity uh, Act was passed that he would be out doing consultations and uh, and and meeting with groups and all that come come September. Um, obviously, this the fact that there's still 12 vacancies to this committee uh, it doesn't doesn't bode well on his commitment to, to meeting the commitments that he made in the House. And once again, there are there were 34 applicants that came forward to this uh, for this board. So there really is no. It's, it's not that there was a lack of people that came forward. It was that there's only three people that are being recommended. So thank you. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, anyone else? Yes, this is Rafa de Costanza, MLSA Park West, and I have a... Um, uh, a motion to make for the Department of Health and Wellness, uh, the board of the Nova Scotia College of Chiropractors, we have Rhea Banks as a member. All those in favor? Uh, Mr. Chair? Oh, yeah, Mr. John? Thank you. I just, uh, I'm wondering if uh, the clerk can confirm this or not, but does this meeting pay, or does this board pay $300 per meeting? Oh. I don't know. I mean, that would be in the uh, the ABC's package you were sent. 
Yeah, I do believe it does. So I'd just like the record to reflect that uh, applicants to this board are paid $300 plus expenses per meeting. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 A motion is carried. Uh, anything else? Yes, Rafa, Rafa Di Costanzo again. We have the Nova Scotia College of Counseling Therapists. Uh, uh, we have Trevor McGowan as public representative. Any questions? All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion is carried. Is there any more ABCs? Yes, one more for me is Council of the College of Paramedics of Nova Scotia. We have three names. Nicholas Burke as public representative, Dr. Caitlin Lee as public representative, and Andrew Nimor, sorry, I'll pronounce it better, uh, Nimor Vosky as public representative as well. So. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. Is there any more ABC? I have one, uh, Bill Warren, Department of Justice. I move that the Licensed Professional Planners Association uh, have a new member, Amy Verick, as a member. Is there any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Is there any more ABCs? I do. I will recognize, uh, I did receive a few text messages. Uh, I will recognize uh, the NDP caucus. They wanted to uh, put something forward, so I recognize Claudia Chender. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, it's Kendra Coombs first. Sorry, Kendra. Yep. That's okay, thank you. Um, I would like to put forward a motion for consideration of the committee. Uh, I move the committee, first I would uh, read the motion. I'll read the motion and then I'll speak to it. I move yep. the committee write a letter to the Minister of Labor and Advanced Education calling on him to immediately, one, review and revise criteria for post-secondary board appointments to ensure greater alignment between the appointee experience and the interest and history of the institutions they are to serve. Two, design and institute with university community involvement, a diversity strategy for post-secondary governance that includes the recognition of systemic racism in post-secondary education institutions and the initiation of anti-racist action planning at the leadership level. Nova Scotia universities are crucial pillars of our province whose governance requires transparency, accountability, and diversity of perspective. Student and faculty voices are critical in this process. Recent events at NASCAD U have uh, underscored broader concerns with university governance that must be addressed. As universities navigate the physical and logistical challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic and rise to meet the demands, both new and old, of the BIPOC communities, asking for change, university leadership must remain responsive and accountable. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any discussion? Okay, uh, but one minute here. Um, you should all have that in your email, Claudia. Yeah, I'm just checking to see if I have it in my email. I apologize. I just want. Can I? Uh, does the committee mind if I just take two minutes to go through my email? Fine. Okay, I see. Thank I, you. Uh, I'd like to, uh, Mr. Chair.
I'm at, so, um, everybody, just can I take five minutes? I'm trying to find it within my email, and I can't find it. Uh, is it possible yes. to have it recent? Go ahead, Rafa. Sorry, I wanted to take a recess, Mr. Chair, for five minutes as well. I need, I need to read the exact details. I did not read it ahead of time. I apologize. Okay. Uh, sure. Can so five, five minutes recess. We could be back at... Yeah. I've, I have just sent it out to members, and this is the clerk. I sent it out just a few minutes ago to members and researchers, so you're seeing it for the first time now. That's, it, it, so that's it, why we can't find it. <laughs> you, you should have it by now. All right. Is it okay if we just take a moment to read it over? Yes, yeah, five minutes, please. Thank you. Everybody in agreement? Agreed. Agreed. Agreed.
Okay, that was actually seven minutes. Um, um, Mr. Chair, this is Rafa. I'm, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what it in exactly involves. Can I have another five minutes, if possible? Uh, yeah, as long as, yeah, we'll, we'll give you another five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Hi, Judy, it's just me again. I had to hang up and redial again. Thank you. Okay, so you're back in the meeting now, Rafa? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. Okay, are we ready to go? Yes, we're ready to go. Uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, yeah, Suzanne. Or, uh, okay. Yep, Suzanne. Um, I'd like to say that this government has ensured more diversity to the bench and various boards, to deputy heads, and we have also committed to ensure the balance of representation on all fronts. The NDP had the opportunity to diversify boards and enact these recommendations when they were in government, and they chose not to. So, therefore, we will not be in agreement with this motion. Claudia Chender here. Claudia, go ahead. Um, well, uh, the NDP hasn't been in government in seven years, so um, those arguments I don't think hold much water in terms of what's before us, and we're not talking about specifically diversifying agencies, boards, and commissions. Um, if you heard my colleague, um, the member for Cape Breton Center, uh, and looked at the motion, in fact, what we are suggesting here is that the criteria for the appointment of people to university boards in particular, and I might say that Nova Scotia has 11 different acts governing universities, whereas most other provinces have one, we have a very complicated system. We have 11 different boards also governing our 11 universities. And the criteria for the government appointments to those boards, of which uh, every board has some, have nothing to do with the aim, uh, purpose, or objectives of that institution. Rather, they mirror the requirements for corporate boards. So they look for people with in expertise in finance and accounting and other things all of which is important, but what we've seen in the recent controversy over uh, the firing of the NASCAD president by the board is that there is often a massive gulf between the interests of the university community and leadership and faculty uh, and the governance of that institution. Um, and that has, in fact, brought us time and time again into very difficult and also very opaque situations. Um, and so one simple way to remedy that, uh, we think, is to simply change the criteria by which uh, those appointments are made. And that is what we are suggesting in part here. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify that motion. Um, thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Chair, Brad Johns. Mr. Chair, Sandra Coons also would like to speak. Go ahead. Who are you recognizing, Mr. Chair? Mr. Johns. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I think that uh, to, to say that because uh, a previous government didn't do something when they were in power um, certainly doesn't justify doing something now. Um, I think that that's a bit of a cop-out reason, to be honest. Um, you know, I do, I do support the motion that the NDP are bringing forward. I think that it is timely, given uh, circumstances and, and uh, current events. So I do think that, uh, you know, it's a timely motion. I would point out for members that this is a request to send a letter to the minister. Um, so thereby, I would assume as previous letters to previous ministers, what we will receive back to the committee is a, uh, a response to the motion, and uh, the minister will respond to us. So, you know, I, I don't think we as a PC caucus have any concerns in regards to the motion. What I would say is I, I would think that... Uh, it may be beneficial to actually look at splitting the motion into two parts. It is a, it is two uh, different things. Um, the second part, you know, I think I think it would be nice to see the institutions be able to do uh, the review that's requested in the first half and then reply back. But uh, having said that, uh, I think that both of these uh, parts are timely. Um, and uh, as I said, we'll ask for it, it, the motion is to ask for a, uh, write a letter to the minister. The minister will reply back to the committee, and uh, you know I see no harm whatsoever in requesting that. So uh, the PC caucus supports the motion. Uh, Kendra. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd also like to add that this motion is also in line with what faculty and students have been asking for over the past few past few years, but specifically over the last few months. And I think that as um, those that are attending this un attending all universities, um, and as well as teaching at them, um, I believe that they should have a say in also the governancing of their of the boards. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, this, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, hello, can you hear me? No, I can't. We can now. Okay, now I proof can. That there, proof that there is uh, drop zones in my community. Okay, go ahead. It's Suzanne Lonis Croft. Um, this government will continue to, to keep reviewing all appointments with a gender lens and a diversity lens, and uh, I call this to a vote. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No. Nay. 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 Motion is defeated. Okay. Next. Uh, tie, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. Yeah, given, given that this is done by teleconference, perhaps we should read names. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, are you so? Uh, Call on people's names, Brenda. Okay, go ahead. Would Would you like me to read the names, or would you prefer to, Mr. Chair? Well, well, one second here. Uh, there, so there were four against. Four, four. Uh, uh, it's a tie, so uh, we have to go to a tiebreaker, which would fall on me, right? Are, are, is the committee agreed that four of them voted yes and four of them voted no? Yes. I'd, I'd like to. Uh, uh, I'd like a roll. Oh. Madam Clerk, I'd like a roll call done officially, please. It's Brad John. Okay. That's that's the chair's decision to make, but that would be my advice. Uh, well, uh, let's. We can certainly do that, but uh, you know, it, it sounded to me like four people voted for and four people voted against, and it was decided that it was a tie. So uh, it's up to the chair to break that tie. So uh, my vote is no. So the tie is broken. Um, the next motion on the floor. Uh, did, did the Conservative Party or have a motion? We do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Johns. 
Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, almost daily I'm seeing articles and editorials in the news and online by Nova Scotians who uh, have questions and concerns regarding this coming school year. Uh, there seems to be a, a, a sense of confusion, a sense of concern. Nova Scotia parents, students, teachers, I think we're MLAs, I think we're all interested in the safe and prudent reopening um, of the schools and the plan that's coming forward. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I mean, it is, it does fall uh, as a matter pertaining uh, to education and early childhood development. It's within the mandate of this committee. Uh, so I, I believe it's incumbent that the committee uh, helps the department uh, in its efforts to communicate the reopening plan to Nova Scotians and to parents. And so I therefore like to make the following motion, which is that I move that the committee invite the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development to our August 25th, 2020 meeting, extending to them an opportunity to present information on Nova Scotia's back to school plan prior to the planned reopening of schools on September 8th, 2020. I'd so move. So I, I will say this, that um, I, I do appreciate the, this is just my own feeling as chair, to deal with uh, setting up uh, witnesses. I do know heading into August, September, uh, for HRC and the Department of Education is probably one of their busiest times. Uh, maybe uh, we can have a discussion around this, um, but I don't know, and this is just my own feeling, is I don't know if uh, it would be Mr. Chair, sorry. Why, just wise to pull the department away from the massive amount of work that they have to do to appear before the committee. Uh, we could potentially uh, ask for a letter. That might be a lot easier for an explanation, but I don't know. Uh, but if we want to have a discussion about that, certainly can. It's not my decision to make, but I just feel like as a father of three, I prefer to have those um, experts and those individuals on the front line uh, with the teachers, with the NSTU, and with uh, all the resources to ensure that, you know, anything that comes up that they're able to deal with. But we can, uh, I'll recognize uh, Rafa de Costanza. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I believe we can uh, make this as, as part of the agenda setting that we invite, but we have to decide on it when we set the agenda. So we can uh, refer this to the agenda setting meeting. Mr. Chair, can I make a comment, please? Mr. Chair, one, thank one you. Second, Mr. Scott. you certainly can. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, I take it. Uh, I take extreme. It, uh, I it. I, it's so frustrating these meetings, Mr. Chair. And respectfully, first of all, as the chair of a committee, the role of the chair is to chair the meeting, not to provide uh, personal uh, opinions. In fact, as a chair, the chair is supposed to have no opinions until it comes to a vote. Second of all, Mr. Chair, if I could, it's a motion I've just put before the committee. So it doesn't, uh, you know, I, I would like to have a motion made, see if it's seconded, have the proper debate on it, and then call for the question on the motion. Um, I find it very frustrating the way that uh, some of these meetings are done and uh, the position that you take as chair during these meetings respectfully. So, you know, as should be done, a motion's been placed. We should ask if there's a so, seconder. Thank you, thank you Mr. Johns. Uh, Prof Proper we, protocols, I, I, please, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Proper pro Mr. protocols. Mr. John, I ask that you uh, uh, let me respond to that. Uh, I will say that I do have a vote. I, I did not at any point, to be very clear, I did not at any point shut down discussion or stop the motion from coming to the floor. I, as a, as a MLA that represents 20,000 people, and as a father of three whose all three children are in the uh, in education system, as a Nova Scotian, I have a right to an opinion. Um, my opinion does not sway this committee one way or another, and to say that it does is, uh, is in fact, wrong. I don't think I swayed your opinion. I don't think I swayed Kendra's or Claudia's or anyone on the Liberal side. After I, I said what I said, I opened the floor up to discussion, 
and the the committee, as I state it, the committee can then decide which way they want to go. So with that, I did recognize uh, Rafa de Costanza. There is uh, a point that's on the floor now, and you guys can have at it and have a discussion. So, Mr. Chair. Mr. Johns. Thank you. If I could, I am requesting, uh, and this is aside from the motion, but that proper protocols for running meetings be followed in this committee. I sat on well over 50 different boards and committees, community, municipal, and provincial, and I've never sat on a committee that has run anything like this whatsoever. So perhaps if we could, for our next meeting, follow proper protocols for meetings, I would find that very beneficial. So that's a comment, and I would go back to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm sure uh, I'm sure we'll take that under consideration. Um, so Chair, there's Rafa a motion on the yeah. Rafa. Yep. Yes. Just that we would. I'd like to put that motion that this uh, his suggestion be put onto the agenda setting meeting. That is my motion. Okay. All those in favor of that motion? Mr. Chair. Aye. Thank you. No. Mr. Chair, you can't put another motion on when there's a motion on the floor. Mr. You have John, to vote on the current Mr. motion. John, Mr. Johns, I ask, I ask that you allow me to respond. There is a, the first motion is on the floor. We are voting on that first motion, and then we will vote on the motion put forward by Ms. DeCostanza. So instead of reacting, please let me explain. There is a motion on the floor put there by yourself. We will vote on that motion, and then we will vote on the motion by Rafa Duke Costanza. Thank Mr. you. Chair, so, Mr. Chender. Ms. Chender. Um, so I'd just like to speak to the motion uh, around Thank calling you. the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development to appear at the August 25th meeting. And I would say that the um, NDP caucus supports this motion. Um, and I also just would make a comment that the rationale of not having them appear because August is a busy time for school mirrors the rationale for not having the health committee meet because everyone in health is too busy to appear at a committee. Um, I would remind the committee and people listening that committee hours are maximum two hours long, committee meetings, um, and that they exist to inform uh, members of the Legislative Assembly and, by extension, Nova Scotians about um, important aspects of government business. So the idea that a department with hundreds of people uh, couldn't make two hours to present plans um, to a committee, um, in my opinion, is not sufficient rationale uh, for not calling them to appear. Um, and uh, I think that it's of the utmost urgency that Nova Scotians have the best possible information around school reopening. Thank you, Ms. Kender. Uh, so there's a motion on the floor um, put forward by Mr. Johns of the Conservative Party. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. We are at a tie. Uh, um, and uh, I will be voting no. There is also another motion on the floor to bring this topic up at committee setting agenda uh, by uh, Ms. DeCostanza. All those in favor? Uh, Mr. Chair. Aye. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, John. thank you. It's uh, MLA Brad Johns. Discussion on that motion. So through you to the clerk, when would that meeting for agenda setting meeting be? The clerk? Well, um, we still have two sets of witnesses on our last agenda, and if the committee decides to proceed with those, then I'll bring them in as soon as we're hearing from witnesses again. Or it's, it's up to the committee. They can decide to, uh, uh, you know, scrap the old agenda and hold a new agenda setting or to, uh, yeah. you know, add to the ones we already have. It's, it's up to the committee, really. So, Mr. Chair... Mr. John? Thank you. So I guess there isn't much sense in uh, 
supporting or voting for or against the, the motion that's now on the floor because uh, by that time, schools have gone back in. So uh, it seems somewhat of a mute point, but uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. John. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The vote? Aye. Opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, I will recognize the NDP caucus. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We um, have another motion to bring also in relation to school. Um, I will put forward the motion and then I'll speak to it. And our motion is that uh, we move that the committee hold a forum as soon as possible to allow stakeholders to present to this committee to bring forward recommendations for improvement to the school reopening plan, which the committee can then bring forward to the minister. Um, and I'll speak to this, and it might take me a minute. Uh, you should have this in your mailboxes as I'm speaking if people want to take a look at it. Um, last week we saw the government's plan for reopening schools in September. That plan is essentially an outline. Um, so the plan says that it prioritizes safety, but there are a lot of details um, that are not included in that plan. Uh, and so our caucus, along with teachers, staff, families, our colleagues, which we've heard from already this morning, have many concerns and unanswered questions about what the plan actually looks like. Uh, we have concerns about the reliance on class cohorting because we know that even though they may be in a cohort in a classroom, they might be in a different cohort on a bus and again in extracurriculars and again at home. Um, and we haven't seen any guidelines at all about before and after school care. Uh, we want to see the government make the necessary and interventions to ensure the safe reopening of schools. We've heard about investments in technology, but we have no clue about investments in cleaning, PPE, and its safe uh, space and staffing. So given the importance of this issue, given the importance of uh, all the stakeholders concerned, um, I'm putting forward a motion that the committee hold a forum on the plan for reopening schools to allow stakeholders, including the NSTU, school advisory councils, and others to provide the committee with suggestions that we can put in front of the minister. Uh, and I'll just take a moment um, to, to let the committee know uh, that there is a precedent for standing committees of the legislature to do this. On June 24, 2004, the Standing Committee on Community Services held a full-day forum on family violence which included presentations and a roundtable discussion. Uh, the committee held a second forum on this topic in 2005. And at the, two, at the 2005 agenda setting meeting of the Community oh, Service Committee, uh, Stephen McNeil, the member for Annapolis, now the premier, made the suggestion that the committee hold a forum on poverty and income assistance rates. Um, and as a result, a number of forums were held on poverty in the winter of 2006. On September 23rd, 2008, the Community Services Committee held a forum on disabilities. And so my point is that as a committee, we have the ability to convene a broader discussion on a topic um, with stakeholders and members of the public. Uh, we know that there was an electronic form sent out to parents, um, but with all due respect, um, everyone that I've heard from has felt that that engagement was insufficient. Um, so in closing, uh, as the member for Annapolis explained in 2005, this forum can give us, quote, a general sense of what we can do as a committee to put ideas in front of the minister to improve that situation. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Let's go ahead. Thank you. So uh, the PC caucus supports this. I think that uh, it's similar to the motion we brought forward. I think that it is utmost concern to be able to address some of the concerns that parents, teachers, and students have and to uh, receive feedback to be able, it's, it's prudent to listen to their concerns and be able to address some of them and put some of uh, the concerns try to alleviate some of the stress that's out there that uh, parents, teachers, and students are currently feeling. So uh, the PC caucus does support this motion. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, it's Suzanne Lonis-Croft. 
I'm just, um, I would just like to ask Ms. Tender how she sees a forum playing out. Like, what, how will we do this? Is, will it be an online forum? Um, uh, how is it to be organized? Um, can she give me some ideas? She's obviously put some thought into this. Uh, Mr. Chair? Ms. Tender? Thank you. Um, appreciate the question. Um, I think uh, we are somewhat open as to the format, but I would suggest probably that we give people a few weeks of advance notice, uh, and then we can hold it over um, whatever video conferencing platform um, the uh, Ledge TV would recommend. So um, we've seen a number of these kinds of forums over the last few months on Zoom and uh, WebEx and other platforms um, where we could have uh, the chair of the committee perhaps and maybe another um, couple of members of the committee from each caucus as appointed um, uh, open it up to discussion, um, have a few questions. Um, and just give people the chance to uh, offer feedback and have a short conversation. I think it would be great if we could have someone from the department, um, whether that be the deputy or an executive director uh, present um, to kind of hear and assimilate that feedback. Um, but I guess if, if this uh, motion is approved, um, then I would um, be happy to, to, you know, flesh out a proposal for the um, for the committee. So, but we, um, Suzanne Lonas Croft again, um, Ms. Gender, um, just wondering. Well, the survey w that was put out by the department had 28,000 people respond. Um, do you not think that's a, a good indication of? of people voicing what their concerns were? Uh, I, Claudia Chender, Mr. Chair? Sorry, I apologize. Oh, that's okay. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's great that parents were able to respond, and, and I certainly hope that the views of those parents um, were included. Uh, we have heard from many folks, though, in more organizational capacities, in particular the school advisory councils, which were really singled out during the sweeping changes to education that happened a few years ago as the kind of focal point for um, school decision making, that they were almost completely left out, um, except for to the degree that they filled that out as an individual parent. So I think that there are, there is lots more feedback on a school, region, and regional center level um, that may not have had an opportunity to come forward, number one. The second piece is that all of that happened in a vacuum. So for one thing, it happened some time ago when the epidemiology of COVID was different in our communities, um, but also it happened in absence of any specific plan or outline to talk about. So we now have uh, the outline of a plan that's been presented by government, and I think it's an opportunity to respond to that plan in particular um, and make suggestions for improvement. Well, I think the department has really, you know, what, put a... One second, one, one second uh, Suzanne. Uh, before we continue, um, we are a lot of from 10 to 11, I think, was the time for the committee meeting. We are uh, four minutes away from 11 o'clock. Uh, as to the clerk, uh, will we need uh, consent to, to go past 11 o'clock? Yeah, as long as the committee agrees, either by consensus or a vote, that's okay. Okay. Do, do we want to extend the meeting till, meeting till 1130? Yes. Is that yes. Okay. Yes. So let's the mo so somebody could somebody please uh, Mr. Johns would you like to put a motion on the floor? Mr. Chair, I would so move that the committee extend for an additional half hour till 11:30. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, I apologize for interrupting. Um, uh, Ms. Lomscroft. Yeah. Um, I really feel the Department of Education will continue to work really closely with stakeholders. Um, and I think that survey sort of demonstrates that. And this is ongoing. They will continue to be seeking valuable f feedback from, from, from the teachers' union, from parents, 
um, from principals, there are RECs, and I think we we really have to put faith in the minister and the Department of Education to carry this forward. So the motion is on the floor, uh, unless there's any more discussion. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Nay. 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 The tie, I'll break the tie with the nay. Um, is, do, does anyone else have any other motions left? I do, Mr. Chair, Kendra Poon. Okay, um, Kendra, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would put forward another motion for the consideration of the committee. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has underscored what has been long known by most people, frontline workers make our society run. But the government has left it up to employers to decide who qualifies for the essential healthcare workers program and has said that the o only those who perform publicly funded care and who provide direct care will receive payments and possibly not until October. This means great confusion and exclusion, as many are left trying to find out whether they are in or out. Many essential workers have been told that they are definitely out. For example, administrative workers in some healthcare environments. This wage top-up should be made available widely to all healthcare workers who provided essential care during the public health emergency. I move the committee write a letter to the Minister of Health and Wellness calling on him to immediately, one, provide a list of employers and positions that qualify to the committee. Two, expand the essential worker top up to all essential workers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, so, so uh, Kendra, um, the, so what you're asking is which department are we sending this to? Minister of Health, the Health and Wellness Department. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, this is Rafa Di Costanzo. Sorry. Yeah. Can, can we take a five-minute break? I mean, yeah, there are so can. many motions, yeah. and I'd like to see that one in writing, please. Certainly. Um, it's in your is email. it possible to have that? Is, okay. It should be already sent to you. Yeah, it's in your email. Okay. Uh, is, I, so we'll take I a five-minute read that. Uh, for the members to review the motion. Is everybody there? Brad, John, So, yes. um, it, just one minute, please, if you could give me a moment. Um, I'm going to have to, um, can we, I know this is going to sound, I just answered the other line, it was my foster dad and his, his, there's been a death in the family. Um, uh, one of our, one of the kids that was just born, uh, anyways, I have so, to Mr. Know. Chair, Mr. Chair, I would suggest you excuse yourself, and perhaps the vice chair who's with us could take over. Correct. Suzanne, are let you here? Just, let me just check this. Hold on. Okay. I'm 
learning and stuff like that. Madam Clerk? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. I just, there was so much silence on the line, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't cut off. <laughs> thank you. We're, we're, we're still in recess. It's okay. <laughs> Respectful. Thank you. Madam Clerk, it's yes. Dan Lonis Croft. Can we take a, a ten minute recess, extended ten minute recess, please? Uh, yeah, I think we're in recess now, so uh, we no. can just can extend, we extend that for it? ten. Sure. Yes, yes, we can, okay. as long as we're back by before eleven thirty, and if necessary, we can extend the meeting beyond eleven thirty by vote. Okay. Thank you. Okay.
Judy. Yes. Thank you. Just checking. I uh, I hung up there by accident, and I had to call back in. Thank you. Okay. You're back in. Are we back on? Is the chair uh, on? Uh, I'm not sure whether the chair is present. Brendan, are you there? I think he's had an emergency. Yeah. If if the chair can't continue with the meeting, then you as vice chair then can I call the chair? meeting back to order. Yes. Okay. Is everybody on the line? Can we do a roll call of Good members? Idea. This is Suzanne Lonis Croft. I'm taking over as chair. Um, Bill Horn. I'll, okay. Bill Horn, you're here. Rafa Di Costanzo. Yes, I'm here. Um, Brad John. Brad John. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. O okay, Larry Harrison. Larry Harrison. Yes. Here. Okay. You've been a quiet member today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, yes, I have, but my goodness, it's been an interesting conversation. <laughs> Kendra Coombs. Here. Claudia Tender. Here. Okay. Um, I do have a member who is calling in. Um, Minister Ince is, is going to come in and replace. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, if I could, I, I object to the fact I recognize that uh, the chair had to leave. Um, I do object to the fact that uh, another member is being uh, floated in here in the middle of the meeting, particularly given the fact that uh, at our previous meeting I did discuss the fact that uh, the Liberal members on the committee uh, that there was a vacant seat. I did address at the last meeting and request to have that seat uh, filled for this meeting. Particularly, I pointed out, given the fact that there are 26 Liberals, um, and uh, the meeting went forward. There was a uh, committee membership list that was sent out, and on that list it still continued for today's meeting showing a vacant seat. Um, I do object to uh, having uh, somebody floated in now at the last minute who uh, hasn't been here for the whole meeting. I don't know. You know, I, I go through you to uh, 
to legal counsel to see whether or not that that's even uh, prudent to be able to do that. So I'd like a clarification, if I could, from legal on this. Uh, There's no, yes, Mr. Head? There's no problem with a substitution in the middle of a meeting. It, for, for the chair who left, uh, you can't substitute, of course, for the, the vacant seat. Oh, so Mr. Ince would have to chair, not me as the vice chair? No, 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 it doesn't, no, it, just because he's substituting doesn't make him the chair. You, you would still be the chair. Okay. But is, are we allowed to bring Mr. Ince in? Yes, you are. Okay. Thank you. Are you clear on that, Mr. John? Yes, Madam Chair, although I still object to it and don't feel that it's uh, correct given the fact that there is a vacancy that uh, was available to be filled, was addressed at our previous meeting, and was not filled for this meeting. Um, but I, I, take it, I take advice of uh, legal counsel. Thank you. Okay. Do noted, Mr. Johns. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, can the clerk, since I was not chairing, where did we leave off? For sure. I think there was a motion on the table already. I believe it was... Okay. Uh, Ms. Chender's a, motion. Uh, was it Ms. Coombs? Ms. Coombs? Yes. Ms. Yes, Coombs it was one about the health department. was on the table. Um, okay. Um, are we Madam Chair? Yes, Madam. Ms. Chender. Uh, it's Kendra Coombs. Did you want me? Would you want me to reread that for um, Mr. Ince's knowledge? I, I think Mr. Ince is now on. Mr. Ince, are you present? I am. Okay, Mr. Ince is here. So can you please make your read your motion again? I will. Thank you, Madam Chair. The COVID-19 pandem COVID pandemic has underscored what has been long known by most people. Frontline workers make our society run, but the government has left it up to employers to decide who qualifies for the Essential Healthcare Workers Program and have said that only those who perform publicly funded care and who provide direct care will receive payments, and possibly not until October. This means great confusion and exclusion as many are, being, as many are left out trying to find out whether they are in or out. Many essential workers have been told they definitely are out. For example, administrative workers in some healthcare environments. The wage top-up should be made available widely to all healthcare workers who provided essential care during the public health emergency. I move that the committee write a letter to the Minister of Health and Wellness calling on him to immediately provide a list of employers and positions that qualify to the, to the committee and expand the essential work, worker top up to all essential workers. Okay, there is a motion on the floor. We Madam Chair. Ms. Mr. John. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the PC Caucus does support this motion. Um, I know myself personally as an MLA would find uh, this beneficial to be able to have the clarification to be able to explain to my constituents uh, who is uh, qualifies and who doesn't and uh, why certain essential workers qualify and others do not. So I, do, I would find this very beneficial and uh, the PC Caucus does support this. Thank you. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. The motion is defeated. We will, I will recognize Ms. D. Costanzo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I would like to um, adjourn. Actually, I, I really had to stay another 20 minutes. I had another appointment and they're waiting for me. So uh, if we're done with the motions, I'd like to adjourn this meeting. Uh, Madam no, Chair, on the floor to adjourn. Madam and Chair, discussion on the motion. Discussion, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. There was a motion. Uh, may I you. intervene? Yes. Uh, there's no debate on a motion to adjourn. Oh, there you've ruled. Okay. Say, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. The motion is carried. The, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Judy. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. John. Would you